Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Eyes on Earth, a podcast produced at the USGS Aero Center, which celebrates its 50th anniversary this year. Our podcast focuses on our ever-changing planet and on the people here at Eros and across the globe who use remote sensing to monitor and study the health of Earth. My name is Tom Adamson, your host for this episode. Earth as Art is an example of the initiative and creativity of Eros staff. The project shows that, in addition to their scientific value, many satellite images capture an incredible variety of views of Earth and are simply intriguing to look at. And you can download the Earth as Art images for free from our website. Now, we're going to talk about how that project got started back in the previous millennium. It began in 1999 with our three guests for this episode. John Christofferson is a principal system engineer. Ron Hayes is a digital data technical lead. And Pat Scaramuza is a senior scientist. All of them work at the USGS Aero Center. So what were your jobs at Eros at the time that Earth as Art got started? I was the quality assurance lead for Landsat 7 at Eros. What that meant basically was heading up the calibration team and making sure that Landsat was operating as intended and meeting the goals of a well-calibrated satellite. So, John, Landsat 7 had just launched in 1999, right? Right, April 15th, 1999. And the job that you and Ron and Pat had was calibrating the satellites. Can one of you talk just a little bit more about what that involves? Calibrating them is a matter of getting the numbers that are coming down from the satellites and checking them against our known sources. We have black bodies and measurements on the ground and making sure that the numbers convert to a scientifically useful number with units of radiance, watts per square meters to radian and so on. Uh, yeah. But we were doing QA back then, which is more a matter of just looking at the scenes. QA, yeah, we, quality assurance, huh? And the quality assurance was the more fun part of the job. You have to remember that back then, um, the size of one Landsat image meant that it had to spend quite a bit of time in processing and was even a little bit tough to open up on a lot of the PCs people had out here. These guys had great big machines, could open them up and look at them. And we also had sort of a back door to the pipeline of processing where we could look at various images, you know, just thumbnails of them and say, hmm, in the ones that we thought were interesting, we'd pull up and open up even more. Landsat data was not free and open at the time. No. And, and besides that, yeah, in 1999, people probably didn't have computers that could readily and quickly open up a Landsat image like we can now. Yeah, within minutes, you know, within maybe an hour after uh, the image was taken, we could actually uh, uh, view the image, you know, near real time. So that was that was something unheard of back then. Yeah, that was not something that the public certainly could do at that time. But at Eros, you could do it within hours. Right. Uh, we had available to us a, a system called the Image Assessment System, a fairly powerful computer at that time. Of course, by today's standards, perhaps not, but um, <laughs> it was a fairly powerful computer at that time that could get these first look, quick looks at data. Uh, the image processing and ordering system, archiving and processing ordering system at Eros was uh, was quite a bit slower than that. It would take, you know, at least a day or or three to get images available to the public, whereas we had this system that could look at them quickly. And because of that, we got to look at things kind of first and see what was available. It was exciting. The image assessment system is still operational. It's been upgraded a bit since then. I still oh, have to use it every once in a while. So we viewed a lot of images throughout the world, and... Uh, we started noticing that there are some images throughout the world that are pretty cool to look at. And I think Pat has the most uh, artistic eye and he kept looking at these uh, scenes and calling us over and say, look at this one. And then he'd squirrel it away and put it in, uh, you know, in a folder and then, you know, take a look at the images using the electrical magnetic spectrum and different band combinations and you could get some uh, pretty outstanding looking um, pictures that 
really resembled in more of an art uh, uh, scene than anything. So we just started uh, printing them out and hanging them on, on the wall. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, Pat had the most images. His job was to go out and look at random ones, and he kept finding these amazing images. But one of our goals was to, you know, through the color combinations of using, you know, regions of the spectrum that our eyes can't see, but we can with a satellite. And so uh, we pull those in um, and then end up with a product that looked just fascinating as art, that people wouldn't know that they were looking at a satellite image of Earth. What did people think when you would hang them on the wall by your cubicles or by your offices? What, what did people think of those? For a while, we kept getting requests to hang more. And oh, people yeah. wanted them out, outside their office and so on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this uh, is just taking place within Eros. You know, this this is just sort of um, you all in your workspaces displaying some really interesting images. Yeah. It would draw a crowd often. You know, there'd be several people outside standing and looking at it every time we popped our head out. It was fun. And then what did you think could come of this collection of images that you had? We'd all keep writing these to uh, CD-ROMs. And uh, we ordered and got some big old binders, and we called them just Landsat 7's greatest hits. Among those were the artistic ones, in addition to other types of images that we found fascinating. We, we talked among ourselves just kind of... Uh, you know, random musings of maybe getting a coffee table book. But the U.S. government can't publish coffee table books. That's not taxpayer dollar sort of thing. So we just kept scrolling them away. And then uh, one day, a fellow from the German space agency, the Deutsche Luftraumfahrt DLR, um, he was in the middle of putting together a coffee table book. I guess the German space agency can do that. And he had stopped out at Goddard, and he was out at uh, JPL, and he didn't know if he had the images or not, enough images to do a coffee table book. He stopped. They said, you should stop at Eros. He stopped at Eros. We met up with him, and he said, within 15 minutes, I knew I had a book. He, he was looking around at NASA Goddard. He was looking around at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory at some maybe satellite images of Earth that they had. Oh, sure. But then what we had at Eros with Landsat 7, that's what really filled out whatever his project was. Right. The, the book they came up with, uh, Kunstwerk Erde, which is German for uh, Earth as Art, had images of many different types, radar images, other types, and so on. But the Landsat imagery really filled out that book nicely, the ones that we had swirled away. Yeah, I think actually we started the Earth as Art project before he showed up, John. Because I remember working on some scenes for Earth is Art, and he was standing next to me. He says, give me that now. I said, well, it's not done yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll mail it to you as soon as it's finished. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we were in the process of creating images for the Earth is Art show uh, when he showed up. Okay, so at the same time, <laughs> you were thinking of an art show to use with these images. One day, Pat just said, I just want to rent a gallery space and show these to people. They're too beautiful. And I went then and talked to a, a fellow about showing these at the Washington Pavilion of Arts and Sciences, a local establishment here in Sioux Falls, because the Earth is Art is really an interesting combination of Earth and, you know, of art and science. And this is a perfect venue for it. He said that he would sponsor getting these printed out in super high quality photographic prints and framing them, and he called his contacts at the um, Washington Pavilion, and they said, sure, and they scheduled us in. We had to, uh, you know, put the, these images together in, in a nice presentation, and so we um, had a, we, you know, worked with our uh, art department here at Eros, and and um, they, you know, printed them out and, and made frames for them, and then we had um a little description of what each one was a little name for the the scene and then something you know geographical about that uh image so when people first looked at it they would admire it for the art and then they read about it and they learned something about that area of the world do you have any remembrances of how that show at the washington pavilion went over yeah, people loved it. There were there were a lot of people that first night when we were there. 
We gave a short presentation about how we created the images. One of the things I remember from that uh, artist reception, that first showing of it, you, Pat, you came up and said that there was a, a little kid, somebody brought their kids there, and he saw one of those pictures, and he said, look, Mommy, bad spider, bad spider. <laughs> and, you, and you said, yes, that is exactly what I want, to look at it as art. That was cool. That was one of Ron's scenes. I forget the name of the scene, but it was an inland delta in the Amazon region. So and the delta looked like oh. a spider web. Yeah, that was Piranha River Delta down in, in South America. This kind of took off and became popular rather quickly after that. And as I understand it, John was getting some attention from some news outlets. The popularity took off better than any of us had ever thought. We thought, you know, if we can make the whole duration of the Washington Pavilion exhibit, great. But they brought people from D.C. in. They saw it. They said, oh, yes, we got to have a copy of this. So another copy was made, framed on everything, and sent off. And it was hung at the USGS where some other people saw it. And they said, we got to show this on Capitol Hill. And so they showed it in one of the uh, House office buildings. And then it went into the Library of Congress. And a couple traveling exhibits of it started going. I don't know how many places I've had Earth as Art now. It started traveling far and wide. Because I think somebody had uh, interviewed me or interviewed us on it. My name got stuck in an, in an article about it. People kept calling. I got called and interviewed by CNN, uh, Associated Press. And, you know, once you get an AP, that stuff goes all over the place. People were you know, emailing me from Italy. Is this you? And sending me the Italian copy of this. And uh, uh, Brazil. The Munich Daily Paper had it in the morning paper one morning. It was just fascinating how much wider we this thing spread than any of us ever thought. <laughs> it was astounding. There was one of the articles that said, I don't know if I'm going to get the quote right, uh, the, the whole sentence or what, what the whole context of the quote was, but there was a news article that, that quoted John as saying, some of these images just grab you by the eyeballs. Oh, I got grief from that. <laughs> all over the place. I was working a project at the time with uh, Boeing, um, you know, from Aeros. I was the liaison to a group of people at Boeing. I got called that morning, and there was a conference room full of them going, hey, John, don't grab us by our eyeballs. And I'm like, oh, geez, where is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a nice description of how that works, though. You, you see well, some yeah. of these images, and you can't stop looking at it. Yeah, it just, well, what's that, you know, or what's happening here? That's what the scientists do with Landsat imagery every day. Look and understand what's happening here. So what do you all think is the main benefit of Earth as art in terms of making people aware of the value of remote sensing imagery? Well, I think it gets people excited about, um, you know, what they're looking at, and it makes them want to learn a little bit more about um, that image initially, and then uh, when they start looking into it and looking at the collection and then other collections, uh, because there's, what, six collections of Earth of Zart now, uh, you start to, you know, learn more about the planet that you live on, and and it is so fascinating to read uh, ab about all these places around the world. Yeah, and that's kind of what we're all about at Eros is identifying change over time and dis describing those changes, studying those changes in a geographic way, in a scientific way. These Earth as Art images are sort of the gateway for the public to get interested in that work. I'm just astounded that there's now the six generations of Earth as Art out there, and they keep coming up with more. Now that first collection, Earth as Art 1, won an award within the USGS. It won the USGS Shoemaker Award for Communication Excellence in 2003. That award is named after Eugene M. Shoemaker. It recognizes USGS products. I'm quoting from the description now. Products that demonstrate extraordinary effectiveness in communicating and translating complex scientific concepts and discoveries into words and pictures that capture the interest and imagination of the American public. That's what you all started. 
That's what you accomplished with Earth is Art, a stunningly visual product that grabs the public's attention. And then that leads to conversations about the value of remote sensing with satellites. You three really worked on Earth is Art 1, got it started, and let it sort of, you know, move away from home, graduate from college, and have a life of its own. <laughs> that's uh, a good way to look at it. it. That's a cute description. You know, about the time that we got all used to seeing aerial imagery and astronaut imagery of the Earth and so on, it started to become a little whole hum but then we get an instrument up there that can see in other parts of the spectrum that our eyes can't say oh no there's still a world of mystery for you you know an amazement and that's kind of cool landsat allows us to see things that we couldn't see ourselves thank you john ron and pat for joining us on this episode of eyes on earth and talking about the earth as art origin story and thank you listeners Check out our Eros Facebook and Twitter pages to watch for our newest episodes, and you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. This podcast, this podcast, this podcast, this podcast, this podcast, this podcast is a product of the U.S. Geological Survey, Department of Interior.